Okay, today's topic is going to be compound probability. So if you have some time, go ahead and jot this down some more. Compound probability consists of two or more single events. And when you're dealing with probability, the way that you determine the probability of multiple events is you find each probability individually and then you multiply them. So today's lesson, we'll look at some examples. You'll try some and then you'll go to the classwork. So a boy and a girl each flip a coin. What is the probability that a boy's coin will show heads and the girl's coin will show heads? Well, these are kind of like detective problems. we got to figure out how many events are happening. And the first thing I know is more than one event is happening because there's a boy flipping a coin and there's a girl flipping a coin. The first event, we're looking for a boy's coin will show heads. So the probability of heads and the girl's coin will show tails, the probability of tails. Well, when the boy flips his coin, there's one head out of two total options. When the girl flips her coin, there's one tails out of two total options. So to find the probability of both of these events happening, which is what a compound event is, one half times one half is one fourth. So you'd expect one out of every four times this would occur. Here's a little bit different of an example. It says find the probability that a fair number cube will land on a number greater than two and a coin will show heads. So we're looking at two events, a number greater than two. So we're looking for the probability of a three, a four, a five, or a six, and the probability of a heads if someone flips a coin. So the first thing I know when I'm dealing with a dice or number cube, whatever you want to call it, there are six total options. Greater than a two, there are four of them. So there's a four out of six probability that that happens, and flipping a heads is one out of two which gives you four out of 12 or one out of three. And what that basically means is if you complete this experiment three times, you would be projected that one of those times you'd be able to roll a number that's greater than two and flip a heads. So we looked at an example with just coins. Here's an example with number cubes and coins. And then here are two for you to go ahead and try. So pause the tape and give these two a try now. Okay, hey, find the probability that a number cube will land on an even number, even number, and a coin will show tails. Well, that number cube is one, two, three, four, five, and six. Even numbers, there's three of them. So that's three out of six. A coin will show tails, that's one out of two. So that is three twelfths. And when you simplify it, it will be one fourth. The last one here says Patrick rolled a fair number cube twice. Find the probability it will show an even number twice. Well, even number on the first spin is three out of six. Even number on the second spin is three out of six. That is nine out of 36. And when you simplify that, that is also one out of four. All right, one quick spinner example. If you spin the spinner twice, what is the probability it will land on a green on the first spin and an orange on the second spin? So green, one green, four total, orange. One orange, four total, giving you a one out of 16 chance. The lesson is pretty quick for today because this is one of the simpler concepts. So go ahead back to Canvas and find your assignment.